Our next caller is Gilda from Pennsylvania. Gilda, what's happening? How can we help you? Hi. Um, so thanks for having me on. I'm really excited to hear your information. Um, I am, um, so I'm 45, 5'9", five, uh, weigh about 150, 18% body fat. I um, I'm prepping for, well, actually, I'm kind of in the building phase for a bikini competition in probably June of 2022. And... Um, I've been pretty persistent and consistent with my weight training six days a week, cardio six to seven, like 30 minutes, steady state. Um, I have a trainer and I also hired a nutrition coach from one of those bikini, you know, competition, um, uh, I guess groups, I don't know what you call them, but anyway, my coach who resistance trains me gave me a set of macros and then the nutrition coach also gave me a set of macros and they're pretty different. And I just don't know which one is the right one for me. Um, And I wanted to know what you guys thoughts are on that. Okay. Well, Um, I got, I got a couple questions before we get to the macros. Okay. So the competition you want to do is in, is next summer, correct? Correct. And right now you're in the building phase. That's right. Okay. So you're lift. I have here your written question. It says you're lifting six days a week. You said you're doing fasted cardio also six to seven days a week. Yeah, that's right. Okay. So where do we go from here yeah. when it's time to, to get Why ready so for the show? Yeah. Um, I, I was told to cut back on my cardio, but honestly, it's more for my mental <laughs> Then, um, then walk, then walk instead. Yeah, I'm going to suggest yeah. you do yeah. something else for your mental because because and you can you can do walk, things that walk. are active that are not what you're because here's what's going to happen when you get time to to cut down for your show you're going to be left with you know three times a day cardio and even more weight training or cutting calories even more you really want to take advantage of this off season so that the prep is easy and or you don't damage your body after your show because you're already doing a lot with your training. So I would cut back on the cardio or just walk or do yoga or do mobility instead of doing the cardio, your resistance training six days a week, uh, depending on the routine that might even be a little too much right now as well. And then I would looking at the two sets of macros, uh, it looks like one is higher calorie and one is a little lower calorie. Um, I would go with the higher calorie one to start with, uh, and, 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 Stay there and see how you feel. Well, well, I'm, well, I'm, a, well I'm not going to disagree, but I, here's the thing. If anyone gives you a macro breakdown just based off of a, a inputting into a computer or you know jumping their calculator out and writing on with a pencil without assessing you, uh, I think they're both bad. Uh, I would not do this with you. So if, what I would do with you, first of all, we'd have to agree that we're going to eliminate the the fasted cardio every morning. You can walk if you really need to and you want to for mental, because I don't want to cut something out that is de-stresses you or helps you, you gather yourself for the day. Like That's totally fine because that's something you'll probably do forever. So I, I you can keep that. But I definitely would back off the intensity and make you walk. Then I would what I'd want to do is mine and your goal for the next two weeks is to see can we find what your calorie maintenance is. So in other words, I want to I'm going to put you somewhere around maybe these calories cuz maybe they figured it out on a, off a calculator that says this is where you should kind of be. But really what I want to do is is figure out what your individual maintenance is based off of your habits and behaviors, not some calculator. We have a calculator, right? We have a maps macro calculator where we offer this to people, but I if I'm training a competitor I've got to be way more precise than this. Like, so I'm going to tell you, okay, we're going to, we're going to track your steps daily. We're going to track how many, how many days a week you're training. And we want it to be as, as, as precise and consistent for two weeks as possible. So we can decide together. Oh, it looks like when you hover right around 2,200 calories, you don't really gain or you don't really lose. Okay. That's your maintenance. Then from there, we're going to build a reverse diet type of protocol where I'm going to add probably 150 calories uh, a day for a couple of weeks to see how your body responds to that. Our goal for the next like two or three months is to build muscle and to build your metabolism, which if that is the goal, we want zero cardio. All the focus is on building strength and slowly adding calories. And so a good place for you and I to get is two months to three months out from showtime and you're up to 25 to 2700 calories a day without any sort of cardio then you're in a beautiful place for me to prep you for this show and i actually wouldn't even take you on as a client until i could get you up to that point because i don't want to send you into prep 
already doing six to seven days a week of cardio, only being able to eat 2000 calories. Cause like the, like Sal was saying, where do we go from there? Whereas if I could get rid of all your cardio, slowly build your metabolism up, build strength over the next couple of months, get you ready to where you're eating 2,700 calories and no cal no cardio, and you're not putting body fat on, we're in a beautiful place to slowly reduce calories and then eventually slowly start to kick up your cardio to get you ready for a show. So yeah. that's kind of what it would look like. And anybody giving you generic numbers, just like me, I wouldn't be able to tell you for sure until together we track for a couple of weeks and have some conversations around, okay, where are you at? How much? How many steps are you taking per day? Okay, and then from there. And by the way, when we start our process to cut, so this is how I did every one of my bikini competitors, is we actually didn't add cardio. Cardio was the last thing we did. We actually managed steps first. So let's say on average, uh, my female clients were stepping six to 1,000 during the bulk phase or where you're at right now, six to 8,000 steps a day. Then when we decided to transition to our cut phase, I would move their step goals up. I'd say, okay, just make sure you get 10,000 steps a day for the next week. Okay. And then the next week would come and I'd say, okay, now just make sure you get 12,000 steps. And I would keep them, I would keep increasing their activity through steps before I say, okay, now get on that because get on the treadmill and start running to get those steps. I would want you to try and get them through just daily movement until you look at me and you go, Adam it's hard for me to get 17,000 steps in a day without getting on the treadmill and kind of getting after it for at least a half hour, hour. And then at that point is when I say, okay, let's start to do that three times a week. Yeah. And you know, looking at the two macro um, pieces of advice that you got, the and this is going to go along with what Adam said. It looks like the biggest differences between your trainer and the nutritionist's advice, besides the fact that they both might've done what Adam said, which is, you know, kind of spit out a generic number is the carbs. Uh, I see your trainer is recommending around 130 grams of carbs and your nutrition coach about 240. And the fats and proteins are a little different in both recommendations, but it looks like the carbs is the biggest difference. That's going to be up to personal preference uh, because some people do very well lower carb and other people do very well higher carb. So I would mess around with that a little bit and see how you That's feel, right. how your energy is and your performance in the gym. And it's pretty wide, the variance in terms of how people respond to lower carb or higher carb. I, I mean, I've, I've worked with people where higher carb is just, they feel so much better and then vice versa. And you know? this is the perfect time to be doing that. We're in our building phase right now. We're adding calories. So uh, this goes back again. I wouldn't ever do a generic thing with you for one week. We might run a more higher carb diet. I'm asking you as your coach, how are you feeling? Or do you feel strong? Do you feel sluggish? Are you, do you feel like how's you're your bloated? Yeah. How's your digestion going? Your stool? And you're tell you're giving me that feedback, so I know okay she does well on 250 grams of carbohydrates. That's great. Or the opposite, you're like, yeah, Adam, I just feel sluggish and bloated all the time, and I don't know what. It and then I go, you know what? Maybe we're not. Maybe your body doesn't respond as well on a higher carb diet. Let's let's increase fats. Let's lower carbs a little bit because calories we want to be consistent with because we're trying to reverse diet. But I may play with the macros, both protein or carbs and fats, based off of the feedback that you give me. And just the real goal is to slowly wrap, ramp that calorie intake up until I can get you to a place that's more like 26, 2700 calories and then start to bring you out ready for the show. Yeah. I hope okay. that helps. Does that help at all? Yeah, absolutely. So, gosh, cutting cardio is so hard for me. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, well, it's always for my bikini competitors. I normally have to, I normally have to shut that down completely. And by the way, so I'm, Gilda, I'm going to make sure that Doug. Uh, get you in the forum. We have actually, cool. we have a lot of, we actually have a lot of competitors that have gone through this process in the forum and everyone's super friendly. If you post in there, let them know what you're doing and your process and the, uh, the advice the guys gave you. And you can even admit the struggle you have with cutting cardio. You'll get a slew of people that have been in the same spot as you that are probably given tips and advice. And like, you'll, it's a great place and community for someone like you. Awesome. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Awesome. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for calling in. All right. Have a good one. Me Bye. Too, yeah. How common is that, Adam, in the competitive world where people, they go into prep I, doing everything I, and now they're, yeah. they're left with like, what do I add? It's how me? I ended up uh, building a coaching business when I wasn't really trying to. I was just going to shows and meeting people and I would get these, these clients or these, well, they became clients, but I get these competitors that would tell me what their coach had put them on diet and cardio wise. And a lot of these coaches actually have these competitors doing cardio in the off season. But a lot. Yeah. yeah not well, just a lot. Not yeah, just it's some. off season. They're already doing it. And then when season started, it's becomes 
twice a day, three times a day. Yeah. Like it's just ridiculous. And then all they do is just keep cutting calories and calories and have no clue on how important it is for us to build their metabolism up in the off season. So the cutting phase is much easier. Mm -hmm. So it literally, it turned into me just kind of like telling, explaining that to people. And they'd be like, well, would you coach me? And then I'd be like, well, I'm doing a show anyway. Sure. And then it all of a sudden yeah. became a thing where it turned it into a, a side business for me where I was helping these and bikini competitors. It was most common with yeah. it's extremely common that you get a, a client who is doing already cardio and is around this calorie and take 1500 to 2000 and they're doing cardio just to maintain where they're at. And then they want to do a show and like, it's real quick and easy for me to assess that and go, no, like, I know you want to do a show on this date. We're not going to even book a show until we get to a place where we both agree. Mm -hmm. This is a healthy place for your calories to be at with minimal to no cardio that now we're in the place to say, okay, let's pick a show date now that we've got a good metabolism to put ourselves in. It's I such wanna... a hard mindset to break. Oh, it is. Because, you know, and, and you're dealing with somebody like, yes, I will I will go through this building phase, but also I want to shave, you make sure I shave off the fat at the same time. And so that becomes like a thought that like, I need to keep the cardio though, you know, yeah. so that way I don't get, you know, all this extra just, fat. But I, 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 I didn't, look, I never, I never really coached competitors, but I would get uh, female competitors competitors after they were done competing <laughs> broken yes busted <laughs> yeah. they yeah. come to me and they're working out like crazy and all oh, i competed three times last year and i'm looking at their their food log i'm like you're eating 1300 calories yeah. and you're working out and six days a week yeah. and you're running doing like three cardio sessions in a row yeah or they or, or they would they would lose their periods for years or just have all these signs of hpa axis dysfunction so then it was this long process of getting their bodies to heal. And it's because of this. It's like they went into a pre-contest phase redlining, you know, all the way already. So where do you go from there? Now, how do I get my body ready for stage when I'm already doing everything? You just do more. At some point, it back up. Yeah, well, hopefully she goes in that form because there's actually, I know of at least three of ex-clients of mine that is in our private form that I coached for bikini shows. Yeah. So Rochelle's in there for sure. Melissa's in there. And I think Jessica is in there. All three uh, girls that I, I got after either they did it with somebody else or did it on their own and can attest for the way we ramp their metabolism. I tell you, and, uh, Melissa's was the last one I did. And I remember that, I mean, she's what, five, what is most of five, three or shorter, yeah, right? She's, she's a tiny, tiny little petite thing, walks around at 120 pounds, 125 pounds, whatever. She was eating 2,700 calories with no cardio before we decided right. to cut for a show. And when I got a hold of her, she was right around here, 2,000 or so calories, and that was the goal. Let's get you up to a place where you are eating like so much food that you don't want to eat any more food, and then we're ready to reverse out. And I remember we cruised right in with no cardio to the last two weeks. She dieted higher than what she would, what I got her at. So she hit stage at like- 20, More calories than she 20, That's right. She hit stage at 2,200 calories when I think I got her around 1,900 or 2,000. That's awesome. Yeah. This is how you got your pro card in men's bikini. <laughs> <laughs> so awesome. Hey, if you enjoyed that clip, you can find the full episode here or you can find other clips over here. And be sure to subscribe.